Hey guys, welcome back to the lab. Today at the bench, we'll be taking a look at a case landscape style booklet. This is a new version of an ASMR video I did for this book. Uh, this version is faster and it's narrated. So I'll finish the rest of the series in this format. So as you can see, the case has slight water damage and it also has insect damage. Um, that starch filled cloth is food for bugs and I'm guessing that silverfish snacked on this one. So that has really damaged the structural integrity of this case and therefore it needs a reback. And as you can see, these in sheets and paste downs don't have anything written on them and they're not decorated, they're just plain. And they've also got a little bit of water damage to them. So. On a book this old, this is a 1920s book, I might consider retaining them, but in this case, I won't. And as you can see, the sewing on this book is still completely intact. It's perfect, um, which I and the client both love. So now I'm going to check out in sheet paper and try to fit it and see if it works. And as you can see, the spine lining and the mull that was originally attaching the case to the text block are both loose. So I will cut out that structurally unsound spine section and then I will lift, um, this takes a while, all of the in sheet paper. And the first iteration of this video, um, somebody asked me a great question and it was, why are you doing this dry? Why are you not doing this wet? And wet is a great option for pulling uh, paste downs that you want to get rid of if it is um, like newer material or material that you can replace. So, for example, if I worked in a library um, repair department or preservation department and they also did um, circulating collection material repair or if this was brand new, basically, if I can find a replacement for this book, um, I would consider doing a wet removal just for the sake of time because so if you're doing dozens of books um, this way and they've come back into the library like through the book drop and gotten damaged so you have to repair them like that's a great option this is a one-off book um, this client can't get another one and it's just safer to not introduce that level of moisture to the board if it seeps all the way through to the board it can cause the board to cup or warp and I really don't want that also the starch filled cloth is pretty notorious for bleeding. Um, you will see me apply moisture to the starch filled cloth uh, in a very controlled manner at the towards the end of this video. And that's to release the paste down paper where it's stuck to the cloth. And I have tested the cloth to make sure it's not going to bleed everywhere. And a lot of you have asked me to make a list of tools and supplies that I use for conservation and book repair. Um, I have now compiled a list and those are available below in the video descriptions of all of my videos. And so definitely comment and let me know what I've missed because I'm sure I have missed something. And as you can see, I started out this uh, lifting with a big micro spatula and I switched to a knife just because it was going faster. And now it's time for board two. And I'm sorry to the regular viewers on this channel for the delay on this video. I was catching up on some bench work that I was behind on. And I was also keeping an eye on the first iteration of this video, the ASMR version, to see if it ever started doing well, um, to see if I could continue the uh, series in that format. But it really didn't do that well at all. So I figured I would just do a short narrated version for this video and the rest of them in this series. 
And I was also uh, generously asked to give a keynote lecture and demo at an annual meeting of professional archivists. So I had to make that demo and record it and do the post-processing on it in time for um, their meeting or their conference. And so I have been uh, busy doing <laughs> doing random other things. And uh, it's uh, nice to get back to uh, focusing on the YouTube videos. I enjoy doing them. And as you can see there, I had to sharpen my knife and I made that little uh, sharpening booklet so that I can uh, just go ahead and get my tool sharpened at the bench really quick and uh, keep working. All right, so as you can see, I've got the bulk of the paper lifted off these boards and all that's left is a little bit of um, in-sheet paper adhered to the starch filled cloth around the edges, around the turn-ins. And so I'm gonna take a little bit of water in a controlled manner and just wet that and whatever will lift will lift. And I actually can't remove all of it without overly saturating that starch filled cloth. So. As I mentioned earlier, the color can bleed on starch filled cloth and also the starch can be removed. And that is important kind of for the structural and aesthetic integrity of that material. And so I don't really like to get these areas oversaturated and I don't like to lift out too much starch. So this era of book lifting these in sheets can be tedious. This is one of the more uh, stubborn and tedious ones I've done. The kind of modern in sheet lifting, those are usually adhered with a synthetic that is applied sometimes with a machine, kind of in like post-it note, like dots, except they're obviously stickier. They're not really supposed to be removable. But what happens is when you start lifting, oftentimes they will come off in like big pieces with all the adhesive and the modern book covers are often uh, plastic coated paper on the outside. And so that synthetic adhesive just lifts right off. Um, so if I am lifting an in sheet, I strongly prefer a, uh, a modern book and not one of these. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is all for today. We have the, the boards prepped and the case dismantled. And in the next episode, I think I start rebuilding the case and relining the spine. So uh, feel free to tune in for that. And I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And be sure to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with the latest in the lab.